And now, we have here the continuation of the common polyatomic ions. We have hydroxide, hypochlorite, nitrate, nitrite, oxalate, perchlorate, permanganate, peroxide, phosphate, phosphite, sulfate, sulfite, and thiocyanate. Um, take note that these are the common polyatomic ions used in the covalent bonding in a certain ionic species. So it means that this will be the possible um, possible polyatomic ions that I will include in our long phase and in our midterm. So don't forget to familiarize them. Don't forget to familiarize this. So now let's have a work example. Work example. So this are an this is an activity wherein you are going to name the following ionic compounds using the different rules. So we have a tip here. Begin by identifying the cations in an ion in each compound, and then. Combine the names for each by eliminating the word ion. Okay, so that is our guide. So let's have first the given, um, the first given polyatomic ion. Okay, let's have first the ionic compound, which is the iron three sulfate. Take note that iron has positive 3 here, and sulfate has SO4 to negative. So don't forget, you need to identify the cation and the anion first. So the cation is the iron, and the sulfate is the anion. Because again, iron consists of 3 plus, and SO4 consists of 2 negative. So by that, we all know that ion has two or more possible charge. So that's why you need to indicate the Roman numeral. So you have the Roman numeral 3 from the indication of 3. Okay, so iron 3 sulfate. Did you get it? Okay, so now let's proceed to the aluminum hydroxide. Okay, so we have the ELO3, ELOH3, okay, also known as aluminum hydroxide. So now let's identify first the cation and the anion. So the cation here will be the aluminum and the anion will be the OH. Okay, why? Again, you need to reverse the crisscross. So, by reversing the crisscross, you will find out that aluminum has three plus. Okay, you need to return the three to aluminum. And we have here the one. It will be returned to OH. And we all know that OH has a negative. Okay, negative charge. So, you have there aluminum hydroxide so again you are not going to include the roman numeral in writing because aluminum has only one possible charge okay. okay so i know that you got it so now let's proceed to the third example we have the mercury one oxide okay so, take note that we all know that mercury has two or more possible charges. So, that's why you are going to indicate the Roman numeral. Okay, so here, so again, H, okay, HG plus, and we have here two, okay, oxygen, two negative. Okay, because again, then reverse the crisscross again. So again, we have... Again, reverse the crisscross. Okay, so we have Hg 
Oke. Okay. Plus one. We have oxygen to negative. So that by that you can identify the cation and the anion. So again, mercury is a cation. So that's why it has a plus one charge and you have air oxide. So always think about it that you need to be careful not to confuse the subscript in the formula with the charge in the metal ion in part A. For example, the subscript in iron is 2, but this is an iron 3 compound. So again, going back to the first example, we have the iron, the iron 2, I know, iron 3 sulfate. So Fe2SO4-3. Again, the 3 there, the Roman numeral, it denotes the charge that was shared to sulfate. Okay, so you need to rever reverse the crisscross and then you need to return it, the 3, to iron so it becomes plus 3 and the sulfate here, you need to return the 2 to sulfate here so that's why you have 2 negative. So that's why you have there iron 3 sulfate. Iron is a cation. So now let's proceed to the covalent bonding in ionic species with having okay, oxygen. So these um, polyatomic ions that contain one or more oxygen atoms and one central atom of another element is called oxone ion. So we have here um, a tip. Okay, a tip wherein you are going to use this as a guide so that you would be able to name it properly. So starting with the oxo ions, the end in eight, we can name these ions as follows. We have the first okay, tip. The ion with one more oxygen atom than the eight is called per than the body of the word eight ion. Okay, thus we have ClO3 negative or the chlorate ion and that will be your basis. The, chlor the chlorate form having the ClO3 negative. So the ClO4 becomes per chlorate. Again, because from the ClO3 you added one oxygen atom and it becomes form. Four. So again, here, going back to the statement here, the ion with one more than, one more oxygen atom, then the eight will become pair, and then the root word of the element, then place the eight and the ion. Okay, so that's why you have here pair chlorate ion. Okay, did you get it? Okay, I know you can do it. Next is the iron with one less oxygen atom than the eight is called the I ion. Thus, the ClO2 negative is called as chlorate, chloride ion. So again, the chlorate form, the ClO3 negative, babawasan po yan ng isa magiging ClO2 negative because one less oxygen atom. And now it becomes chloride ion. Okay, that's great. So now let's have another tip. The iron with two fewer oxygen atoms than the eight is called the hypo... Okay, then the root word of the element plus I and then ion. Thus, it becomes the ClO negative, okay, having one oxygen and becomes now the hypochlorite. Again, what is your basis? The chlorate ion. And going back to the condition, if two fewer oxygen atoms of the eight ion, it will become hypochlorate ion. At minimum, don't forget that you need to familiarize 